Back in May of 2013, I had moved out of my parents' house and into an apartment community. As I was moving in the very first day, I had heard some loud thumping from the apartment above me. I had hoped it was just a fluke and that the people above me just happened to be doing something loud at the time. But over the next few months, it just got worse. They would very frequently make really loud thumping noises and slam things down, sometimes even causing the room to vibrate a little. I really have no idea what they could have possibly been doing that would be so noisy. I would often hear them screaming and arguing with each other at all times during the day and night. It also wasn't uncommon for them to have a shouting match at 1 am. I reported them to the apartment manager, but she didn't seem to take my complaint very seriously and then brushed me off, saying she'd look into it. I was already locked into my lease for at least a year, so she didn't have much incentive to do anything as long as nothing serious happened. She only cared about collecting rent rather than providing a good community for the residents. I was completely ready to take matters into my own hands and then confront them about their late night fights, but then the situation took a really dark turn. Things went from annoying to creepy when one night the couple had started threatening each other. I heard the guy shout out, you walk out that door and you'll never come back, and then the girl shouted back, get out of my way. That's when I then heard a loud thud and what sounded like glass breaking. Then I heard hurry footsteps walk out the building and the door to the outside opened and slammed shut. It was eerily quiet after that. Even though it was well past midnight, my curiosity really got the better of me and I walked out my door and into the hallway. I climbed up the stairs to the apartment above me and I saw the door still open. The guy noticed me looking in and then walked up to me. Who the hell are you? What do you want? He asked harshly. I heard some noisy nailing. Everything all right? I replied, yeah, everything's fine. Mind your own damn business. He then just slammed the door right in my face. I kind of just stood there for a few seconds wondering if I should call the police or not. I decided not to because there really wasn't anything I could tell them and I was kind of afraid of how this guy might react to his downstairs neighbor calling the police on him. I walked back down the stairs and into my apartment. Things were rather quiet from above over the next few days. I'd hoped that his girlfriend had left her obviously unstable boyfriend for good and that would be the end of it. Unfortunately, I just wasn't that lucky. A couple of nights later when I was sleeping, I had heard a noise coming from the outside hallway that woke me up. I heard some loud footsteps coming up the stairs. I got out of bed and walked over to my door and looked out the peephole. At first, I saw nothing. Then I saw two men walk down the stairs and then stopped to discuss something for a few minutes. I got a really uneasy feeling about them as it was late at night and I'd never seen them before. The door leading to the outside is permanently locked and can only be opened with a key, so either someone had let them in or they had a key. But who were they and why were they here? Then they walked out of the building. It was odd seeing this, but I didn't think much of it and just went back to bed, just really relieved that they were gone. But not 10 minutes later, I had heard those same footsteps yet again. I was still awake and I walked over to the peephole. Those same two men had returned. I saw the guy who lived above me walk down to greet them. I couldn't hear what they were talking about, but they had started to raise their voices with them. Then one of them grabbed the guy and then slammed him against the wall. It was right next to my apartment door so I heard the loud thud of his body banging against my wall and then the shouting, hey let go of me. I quickly got down and then backed away from my door as I didn't want them to notice me looking through the peephole. My heart was beating in fear as I heard the guy scream in pain as one of the men punched him. Then one of them shouted, if you ever come near my sister ever again, I'll cut your throat. The guy pleaded once again for them to let him go but they slammed him against my wall yet again. I then heard them walk down the stairs and out of the building. I kind of just sat there crouched down for a few minutes in total shock as to what had happened. I literally just witnessed my upstairs neighbor get assaulted and then have his life threatened by two thugs right outside my door. When I finally got back up, I looked out my peephole and nobody was there. I tried to go back to sleep but I was too on edge. I just laid there in bed afraid those guys might come back and wondering once again if I should call the police. I decided not to call them since I really didn't want to get involved in a dispute between my upstairs neighbor and two dangerous men that had assaulted him and also threatened to kill him. Thankfully, he moved out shortly after that incident and there wasn't any more trouble with those guys. I moved the hell out of there as soon as my lease expired as I didn't feel safe living there after that night. And again, the apartment manager clearly didn't care about the community she was in charge of. I've since bought my own condo and I'm forever grateful that I'll never have to deal with upstairs neighbors ever again. Hearing someone get attacked right outside your apartment door and then have his life threatened right in front of you, well that's something you just never forget.
So this happened yesterday and I'm still pretty shaken up. Just for some backstory, I'm a 25 year old female and my boyfriend and I both have jobs where we can work from home and in an office. I was extremely tired yesterday morning, so I decided to work from home as my boyfriend went into the office. So I was alone all day with just my dog and cat home with me. The day was normal as any other work day from home that I've taken until about 1.30 p.m. This is where things took a turn. I had just hopped into a work meeting when my doorbell rang. We have one of those ring doorbells with a camera and it notifies my boyfriend's phone that someone's at the door. I texted my boyfriend and I asked if he could check who it was and he said it was an older man who looked kind of sketchy and did not answer the door. So I ignore the door and go back to my meeting. 20 minutes later, I'm done with my meeting and I decided to check my phone. I always keep my phone on do not disturb while I'm working. And as soon as I checked it, I noticed all the calls and texts that I missed from my boyfriend. Panicked, I immediately called him back and he frantically asked me why I haven't been answering. I told him I was in a work meeting and he tells me to look out the window as the man hasn't left our property yet. I very quietly walk over to the front windows of our house and peek out, and sure enough, the man's in our driveway. He had parked his old beat-up truck next to our car in our driveway, and he was looking back and forth very sketchily. He had on dirty jeans and a dirty gray tank top. I immediately run back to our bedroom, and at this point, my heart is pounding in my chest. I try to comfort myself by just saying that maybe he had the wrong house, but no. The man began looking through our windows, trying to see inside and he proceeded to try and open our back gate, which was locked. As I mentioned earlier, I have a large dog, and at this point, my dog is snapping and growling at the front door, as I still had my boyfriend on the phone, and he was actively watching the man on the camera app on his phone. I asked him what I should do since I was in full panic mode and completely alone. Call 911, he firmly said. I did as he said, and with shaky hands, I called. While I waited for the police to arrive, I texted my mom to let her know of the situation and she immediately dropped what she was doing and said she was on her way. The man was still snooping around the house and looking through our windows. At this point, I had no idea what his intentions were, but by the looks of it, they didn't seem good, and I was really afraid he would see me. As soon as the man saw the police coming down the road, he hopped in his truck and sped off. I ran outside to the officer, and at this point, my mom had arrived as well. In tears, I explained what happened, and thankfully my mom got the man's license plate number. The police took his license plate number as well as description, and they told me they'd be on lookout for him. I know this may not seem as scary as some of the other stories here, but when you're alone and there's a man looking through your windows and not leaving your property, you have no idea what his intentions are. It's absolutely terrifying. I wasn't able to sleep last night because I was so terrified, thinking he would come back to try and finish what he started. I'm hoping the police call me with an update since we had the license plate number, and if they do, I will provide an update into the strange man who wouldn't leave my property. Please don't come back again. So I'm 16 years old now and living in a duplex with my family, which consists of three younger brothers all under five, my 18-year-old sister, and my mother and father. About three years ago when we lived in our old apartment, I was home alone for the entire day. This was pretty normal as my father worked in the summer. My mom would take the kids out to do things like swimming and other things like that. I usually just slept in and I had a small list of chores that I had to do during the day before everyone came home. One of those happened to be laundry. The way that the apartment is set up is on each level there's about 20 places where people live and only one laundry room shared amongst us. I lived a few doors down from it and I had to pass the door to the stairs in order to get to it, which that door had a little window. I was going to throw the clothes from the washer into the dryer when I then heard a clicking noise. I wasn't really sure what it was, but for a second I decided to listen before it then stopped. I was always really freaked out from that apartment and this definitely wasn't helping. I finished throwing the laundry into the dryer and then started it. Then I started walking down the hall when I then heard that same clicking noise yet again. I froze. It sounded like it was coming from the stairwell. So as scared as I was I looked out the window and to my surprise I didn't see anyone. Really relieved, I booked it down the hall to my apartment. I closed and locked the door going about the day again or so I tried. When it's quiet in that apartment, you can really hear everything. Conversations, footsteps, laughing, everything. Especially from the hallway, and that's where the most crap was heard. I was in the kitchen feeding my animals when I heard slow, heavy footsteps in the hall. It sounded like they were coming down the hall right outside of the apartment. 
I decided to run to the living room and mute the toad so that I could listen when I then heard three loud bangs at my door. I was kind of prepping my pants at this point, not really knowing what to do. I kept the toad muted and slowly moved my way to the door looking out the peephole. I was horrified at what I saw. It was a black figure standing with its back towards me. I didn't know what to do and I was frozen in place and then I then heard a familiar sound. That same bizarre clicking sound that I heard before. I noped the hell out of there and grabbed my animals then hid in my room. I mean I was really scared but I was starting to wonder if it was really nothing. I usually listen to scary stories just like these to scare the prat out of me but maybe something was actually there. Later in the evening when my sister arrived home I told her about what I saw because she's really into supernatural things like that. When I told her what I saw the color from her face ran away. She said something along the lines of seeing that same figure but in dark rooms and hallways not lit ones. The next time I encountered it I was sleeping on the bottom bunk and my sister in the top. The clock read 3.37 am the fan was going and the nightlight was plugged in. My sister was sound asleep at this point. I heard the clicking again but this time quieter and from under the bed. One of my cats on my bed didn't seem to notice it so I figured maybe I was just imagining it. That was until I then noticed a long black bony cold arm then reach out and start making his way right up to my bed. I then yelped enough to wake up my sister but no one else. Pretty brightly, she just tells me to shut up and that she's trying to sleep. But you gotta see this. I say as I look down and notice the thing's gone now. I didn't catch an ounce of sleep that night. I have lots of other terrifying stories from that hellhole apartment, but I think most of them revolve around that thing. Ever since I moved, I haven't had anything weird happen since. I'm just really glad that thing never followed me to my new house. This happened when I was 17. I'm 22 now, and still thinking about it haunts me to this day. I was at my house on a Friday night. My mother was out of town for the weekend visiting some friends, so I had the house all to myself for the weekend. That night, I invited my friend Dan over for the night, and we decided to watch a scary movie. We got some snacks and soda, and we then turned on my favorite horror movie of all time, which has dragged me to hell. The one where that lone officer denies an old woman's request for an extension on her mortgage and she then gets a curse put on her where she has to break it within three days or she'll get literally dragged to hell. Anyways, about an hour into the movie, me and Dan were having a good time and laughing at random shit in the movie. I paused the movie because I had to go to the bathroom, and just as I walked into the bathroom, I saw out the window that the sky looked green. I knew that there was going to be a storm, but I didn't pay attention to it, so I did my business, washed up, and went to continue the movie. Well... After the movie was over, me and Dan got an alert on our phones. The alert said that there was going to be a tornado warning until 7.45 p.m. and to seek shelter now, and that the threat level was really extreme. We immediately left the house to get into the storm shelter in the trailer park. Yeah, I lived in a trailer park at the time, so we had to evacuate the trailer. Just as we got to the storm shelter, that was when all of the sirens started to go off and the wind started to get violent. The owner of the trailer park unlocked the shelter and us and everyone else in the trailer park got inside of it. We went down to the basement and all huddled. About 10 minutes later, the power went out and we could all hear the wind getting really violent and what sounded like a freight train shook the whole building. It shook so violently that I actually thought it was going to collapse. I started crying and I thought we were going to die. Me, Dan, and everyone else in the shelter started freaking out. There were five loud crashing sounds that came from outside. I was so terrified that I felt like I was going to shit myself. We then heard a loud roar of the tornado's wind from outside through the structure of the building. Then about 10 minutes of noise later it stopped. We were then given the all clear. We all left the shelter and from the damage we all saw, I couldn't believe it. To say the damage was crazy is an understatement. There were a few cars flipped upside down. A couple of trees were uprooted and three houses were damaged. Two others were completely leveled, and another house had a car crash into it. Me and Dan hugged each other tightly while crying hysterically because we were really glad to be alive. We were probably doing this for about 15 minutes. Then we walked back to my house. Luckily, all it had was just a little bit of side damage. Dan also lived in the trailer park at the time. Dan's mom and sister said when they got back to their house, there was damage to the roof. I invited Dan to spend the night at my house tonight. He agreed since he was still terrified. His mom and sister were cool with it too. 
I know this isn't the typical story with a creeper, but it was still terrifying, and I will never forget that day. When I was about 15, my family and I moved into a large house. It was a relatively new home with three bedrooms, five bathrooms, a garage, and even a large basement. Both of my parents were in the upper medical industry and worked several hours of the week. This meant that I would be home alone for the majority of the time while they were gone. I love staying alone as I like to think of myself as mature and adult-like. At the time, we lived in somewhat of a rural area of Knoxville, Tennessee. Those who have been to or live in Knoxville will probably relate to what I'm talking about. While it was a nice city, the crime rate was high and during this story. I got a taste of what that looks like. One evening, I had come home from school and my parents were at work. Unfortunately, this was around the time where Sea of Lady was still rampant, so my parents had to work extra. 15-year-old me immediately hops on to Call of Duty to cure my boredom. I play some matches for a few hours or so before going up to my room and taking a nap. I'd say I slept for a good two hours or so before I awoke to a noise from the kitchen. Looking back, it kind of sounded like a clanking noise you'd hear when moving stuff around. I wake up and take a look at my clock. It was around 7 p.m. I was genuinely annoyed from this noise and put on my slides and went downstairs to see what it was. I ever so slowly turned the corner and what I saw chilled me to the bone. There in the kitchen was a woman going through our fridge. She had her back toward me so she couldn't see me or know that I was there. To provide a little more detail, she was not at all a pleasant looking woman. She looked homeless in looking back. I'm pretty sure she was. She wore torn shorts, a tank top, and some sort of wristband. I put my hands over my mouth and slowly went back upstairs. As much as I wanted and needed to call the police, I couldn't as the only home phone we had was near the kitchen. Instead, I thought of another idea. My parents were friends with the neighbors from down the road, so I figured I'd go there and call the police. Now, I obviously couldn't have gone through the front door, so I did what anyone else would do. I opened my bedroom window and climbed out, while gathering up the courage to fall. When I finally did, I hit the ground with only a sprained ankle and made my way over to the neighbors where I explained what happened. They of course instantly let me in to use their phone to call 911. In the meantime, they made a call to the hospital my parents worked at. The police ended up coming a lot faster than I thought and entered my house. Within a minute, they came out with an old, tired, lanky woman in handcuffs. However, she didn't try to get away or resist arrest. She seemed somewhat neutral about it, as if she had accepted her defeat. As it turns out, my theory was correct after all. She was a dangerous homeless woman who had broken into several homes in the area. My parents had come home soon after, where they had spoke with the police where they then recommended we get cameras. And that's exactly what we did. The next day, my dad went out and installed a high-tech security system around the house. Surprisingly enough, the story didn't end there. It wasn't until a few nights ago where I had brought up the incidents of my mom and asked if she remembered about it. Her eyes went wide with this look of fear and worry. When I asked what the matter was, she sat me down, held my hands, and said she was going to tell me something I didn't know. When her and my dad were talking to the cops that day, the cops had mentioned something that would shock them to their core. When they had entered my house, they had found the woman standing outside of my bedroom door. In her hand was one of her kitchen knives that she appeared to have been gripping tightly. Let's just say that if I hadn't jumped out of my window, things probably wouldn't have ended well for me. Thankfully, we haven't had any break-ins as of today, and I hope it stays that way.